Andrea, and take it over. Okay. Great. Well, thank you all for inviting me today to share. And Summer, what a beautiful farm you have. That was really nice to see. And boy, working this job has made me appreciate all the work that farmers are doing to grow the food that we have in this state. So um, just really cool to see about your operation. Um, my name is Andrea Carter, and I am the outreach agronomist at Native Seed Search. So I'm joining you from Southern Arizona today. And so today's presentation, I'm just going to overview some background about the organization itself and then our seed access programs that may be of interest to farmers, community gardeners and backyard gardeners alike. Next. So Native Seed Search, we are a nonprofit organization. We have a seed bank um, where we steward seeds of the Southwest. Our mission is to find, protect, and preserve the seeds of the people of the greater Southwest so that these arid adapted crops may benefit all peoples and nourish a changing world. Next. So what's in the seed bank? There are over 1800 different varieties um, in the collection. These are food crops, um, wild relative, crop re relatives, um, ceremonial seeds. Um, it's a wide variety from the greater Southwest region. Uh, in the next slide, they'll provide some more detail about what those seeds are, but where did those seeds come from? So the organization was founded in the early 80s and the founders at that period had been working in the Tana Autumn Nation here in Arizona and the feedback they were getting in their work was that what folks really wanted there were, were seeds that their grandparents had right there was a lot of food being grown and distributed on the reservation and the feedback was like well these cabbages and radishes are great but what we really want are our foods and so this inspired the formation of the seed bank and the collect inspired a lot of the collecting that went on in the 80s and 90s um, that is why we have the seed bank today. About 12,000 of those varieties, we know the donor or farmer who gave those seeds to the organization. And that's great. I really, I had the pleasure of meeting um, the, the descendant of an original donor of seeds from San Carlos this past, um, we did a workshop a few weeks back and, and that was so cool because now they're, they were growing the seeds that her family had shared with native seeds. Right? So there was this foresight to know we might need these in the future. And like we see across America, and particularly in Native communities, there was less and less farming going on. And so when you have agriculturally based societies that aren't farming, then you have a loss of culture. And so there was this idea of, well, maybe we'll preserve these so they may be available for future generations. So we owe a lot to, to the foresight of those original donors and farmers who gave to the collection. Some were purchased at markets um, and some were wild harvested like chiltons and a lot of the greens that we have in the collection. Next. Okay, so this map is showing each dot represents an accession or variety that we have in the collection. So you can see it's the, the Southwest, but that includes mainly Arizona, New Mexico of the US, and then Northwest Mexico. So a lot of the collection is from Mexico. Um, again, these are traditional crops such as corn, beans, and squash. These food crops make up the majority of the collection. And the majority of these seeds are affiliated with indigenous communities of this region listed here. So we've got Hopi, Diné, Tana Atam, and then tribes of Mexico as well, like the Mayo and the Ramri. Next. This graph is showing kind of the makeup of the community origins of the collection. So again, you see about uh, 50 Close, the majority is Ramri, um, again, Northwest Mexico, but then also tribes of the Southwest. And when it says unaffiliated there, what that's referring to is non-Indigenous communities, but still regionally significant communities like Mestizo, Mormon communities, um, Chicano communities of the region. 
next. Okay, so what do these seeds look like? And I tell you, this is my favorite part of being at Native Seeds, is being exposed to the beauty of these food crops um, that we can often forget about when we go to the grocery store and it all looks so similar. And then you see, well, you can eat a Mormon runner bean that is originally from Mexico and brought up by Mormon families to Utah. Um, so again, beautiful beans. This jack bean is a perennial bean, super unique. And um, next. Also beautiful corns. And these seeds aren't just beautiful, but they're tied significantly and culturally to the communities from where they're from, right? So they're not just food, but again, this is integral to, to communities and identities of communities. Next. Oh, next slide. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. So where are these seeds living? Right now where I am in Tucson, these seeds are housed in our seed bank where we store the seeds. We're storing them in ideal conditions for long-term storage. So this is cold, low humidity, and dark. Right. This uh, pictured on the right is our walk-in cold storage room where we're going in to grab seeds for packaging. And then we have a, a, a freezer that's kept at zero degrees Fahrenheit for more long-term storage, like where we keep the original seed samples in there. Next. This is our conservation center garden. So we grow out some of the seeds here in Tucson in our garden space. Um, we particularly grow out the seeds that we have small quantities of. So we can increase them before sending them out to farmers who increase them more. So then they can then go out through distribution channels. Do come visit us. Um, whether you want to volunteer, check out the seed bank, see the garden. It's, you know, we're welcome to have visitors for this. Next. Okay, so a lot of our work is also education around seed saving, the importance of it and how to do it. So we have resources like the Saving Seeds in the Southwest booklet that we provide to our community seed grant recipients and farmers, and then online resources like this Practical Guide for Saving Seeds that's available on our website too. Next. So where do these seeds go? How do they get, get out to the people? The organization really has a seed conservation through distribution model, right? That the seeds are conserved when they're grown, when they're eaten, consumed, and shared throughout the region. So the primary way this happens is through our retail outlets. Right now that's online at nativeseeds.org where folks can purchase seeds. Next, there are seed packets. Okay, our other seed access programs that are integral to our work are free seed programs. So this includes our Native American Seed Access Program, which provides 15 free seed packets to Native American individuals living in or belonging to tribes of the Southwest. So here's our seed listing for this year. This is our seed catalog. Um, and within there, you'll find a form to fill out for the Native American Seed Program, which will soon be online as well, where folks can order their seeds um, and, and have them shipped. You can also call us with your seed order too. Um, so that's, that's one important way of, of getting seeds out to folks whose seeds um, are tied to their community. Next. Okay, the other seed programs are community seed grants, as I mentioned. So these provide 30 free seed packets to community garden projects and food access projects working on food security in the Southwest. So pictured on the right is Nawadi Denzon. Um, they were a community seed grant recipient and they've been doing awesome work of getting food out to the community, particularly during COVID. We just did a seed saving workshop and they've been a wonderful partner. So for those of you listening in who are working on, whether it's a school um, or a, a nonprofit farm that's working on food access for those in this region, 
do apply to these seed grant programs. Now the other program is our partner farmer program. And I'd like to give a shout out to our to uh, Bill Robinson, a long term partner of the organization who's been a very valued community um, partner. He's he's revived seeds, he's gotten seeds out directly to communities, as he's talked about. And and that's a big goal of this particular program. So that's what I oversee here at the organization. Um, this program provides seeds at no cost to farmers in exchange for a portion of the harvested seed being returned to native seeds at the end of the season. We also recently have started contract programs where we'll pay farmers for larger quantities of returned seed. So for example, it's $15 a pound for corn, $10 for beans, and this is to help incentivize and acknowledge the time, resources, labor, and water costs that go into seed production and to encourage seed production as an on-farm income source. So here's Justin Casaquito. He, he was a partner farmer with us up in New Mexico. He grew Hopi sweet corn and um, he was doing it on a summer break between college and is an aspiring farmer. We've got um, one of our board members holding human yellow corn that he grew out um, in Southern California. So it's been it's been great to connect to growers and and a purpose of this program is seeds connecting to communities of origin. So we will work with growers to to get seeds of interest to them that they have cultural connections to that they're passionate about. Um, again, with that exchange program, what's being returned to native seeds is a portion of the harvest. The idea being that the farmers are saving that seed for themselves, for their communities to share and to eat. Next slide. Here's some more pictures of the partner farmers. Um, Angela King Sawan, who's of Ramari and Tigua descent. She's actually a Milwaukee and urban farm, but with her ancestry, she's been a long term time supporter of native seeds. And we got her some Ramari tobacco and corn that she was super excited to grow. And, and that's such a pleasure to to help facilitate that cultural connection and, and it is a goal of the organization. Um, Courtney Lewis, who's in Fort Mojave, she's the farm production manager of a community farm out there, of Aquame Farms. And I'll share a quote from her about um, what I asked her, what what is being a partner farmer mean to you? Why, did, why do you want to do this? And, and she shared having our corn back means not only ensuring our future, but reclaiming our native resilience. We've become so integrated with westernization that we lose focus on our end goal of being protectors of this land. To me, this is how I get back my Mojave pride. And I've heard that a lot about the sense of pride farmers feel when they connect with a seed that's of their culture, right? We've There's sometimes, and this is in my own personal experience, you sometimes don't know that your community had a certain variety um, had developed a beautiful corn or a gourd, and then you get to connect to it and grow it, grow it. And there's certainly a sense of pride that you can feel. And, and that always, um, I think, encourages us here in our work. Next slide. Okay, so um, here's my contact information, and I'm just ending on the note that we are still seeking farmers to help us grow out and increase the availability of the seed varieties we steward. So if you're interested in the Partner Farmer Program or the Community Seed Grant Program, um, by all means, check us out at the booth. Um, reach out to me by phone or email, and, and um, I hope to hear from some of you here about participating in this program which is open to native and non-native farmers in the region. So thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, so